and the point at which it begins lies deep in Africa. Here, the highlands of Ethiopia. It all starts off with a seed, a ripple, high in the atmosphere called an easterly wave. In every hurricane season, many of these ripples travel thousands of miles in the direction of the Atlantic, but only a few ever become hurricanes. Not all hurricanes are born this way, but it's a good example of illustrating the point. Now, key ingredients are needed for a hurricane. A cluster of thunderstorms over a warm ocean. The heat from the ocean will be the energy source, and the high levels of moisture in the atmosphere will allow the storm clouds to expand. Now, ideally, any crosswinds present high up or wind shear must also be slight. Otherwise, the storm clouds will get ripped apart, a bit like a flame of a candle being blown out by a breeze. Now, in this next stage, perhaps two days later, strong vertical currents of air here in the centre are building even bigger storms. Air from around the storm is blowing inwards to replace this rising air. And crucially, because our planet rotates, these winds are also rotating. The whole thing is now spinning about a central point and a tropical depression is born. Now, a few days of drifting, winds in the centre are now circling at gale force. The rain clouds have expanded, the seas are rough, it's powerful enough to be called a tropical storm. And in this example, the tropical storm is heading for a region of the ocean where the sea is especially warm. So warm, in fact, that the storm will be sent into a frenzy of rapid growth. Now, 12 hours later, and the energy released from the ocean has powered up the winds to a critical speed. It's now a hurricane, and seen from space, it resembles a whirlpool of cloud, and in its middle is the eye. It's a relatively small circle of calm weather, typically 30 miles wide. This clearer eye is then surrounded by a ring of fused, towering rainstorms known as the eye wall. It's the most dangerous part. Under the eye wall blow the fastest winds. Within the eye wall, currents of warm air rise violently, fanning outwards at the top. Now, another day later, and a major hurricane has made landfall. Winds around the eye are powerful enough to blow a house away. Now, close to the eye is the peak storm surge. It's a mound of water pushed inland by the wind, topped with high waves. Now, most of the damage may come from the flooding and not necessarily the wind. But soon after landfall, with the energy from the ocean cut off, the eye will collapse, the winds will quickly ease, but the rainstorms may carry on for days before completely running out of steam.